So as you can tell by this video's title, I loved Project Triangle Strategy's debut demo. I streamed a bit of it at twitch.tv slash assignerotran, and then I beat it twice all the way through off stream. The demo's not super long, clocking in at about 6 hours total for seeing all the content, but it's a fantastic vertical slice of what Triangle Strategy alleges to offer. But before we get into the details, please subscribe and click the bell to get updates on all my new content. I'll also annotate a bunch of other videos for you at the end. Alright, let's talk about it. Project Triangle Strategy's gameplay is obviously in the tactics style, but what makes it so engaging are all the mechanics lifted and or adapted from other titles. Genre staples like Tactics Ogre's Backstab and High Ground bonuses are present, and Final Fantasy Tactics Advance's combo attacks are here too. If two allies flank an enemy, they will perform follow-up attacks for one another and increase the total damage dealt. Terrain effects from Final Fantasy Tactics are here and have been expanded to allow for more long-form strategies. For instance, ice attacks can be melted by fire to create puddles, and then enemies standing in water can be struck by lightning for increased damage. Octopath Traveler's boost point system, which was lifted from the development team's Bravely Default days, has been transplanted into Triangle Strategy as TP. Skipping an action will grant you TP, and TP is used to perform more powerful techniques. And there are unique features too, such as the Quietuses. A Quietus is an instant use card that grants various benefits without consuming your turn action. Once you're done with the initial cutscenes, you're given a small exploration segment. These play out like the exploration portions of Disgaea. You can get a feel for the layout of the area, find items to use in battle, and talk to NPCs and party members. Some characters have dialogue trees, and the player's responses play a factor in the game's morality alignment known as convictions. Convictions are akin to Fire Emblem's branching paths. There are three convictions, utility, morality, and liberty. From the demo alone, these conviction routes appear dramatically different. Different characters are recruited to your cause, and different storylines play out against different villains. And sometimes it won't even play out the way you want. Important decisions are decided using the scales of conviction, wherein the party votes on how to proceed. You as the player can try to convince others to vote the way you want the story to go, and you can hedge your bets by finding clues and conversation topics scattered about the world, which will unlock more dialogue options. But it's still possible for characters to vote against you, and if the popular vote doesn't end up being what you wanted, you'll be ferried down the opposing route. There's just so much depth, and it all gels together really well. Combat feels very dynamic thanks to all the collaborating mechanics, convictions feel meaningful from the minuscule details to the overall storyline, and exploration serves various purposes, from surveying the landscape to establishing in-universe lore. The story itself seems really great, channeling the darker tones of Yasumi Matsuno's genre-defining works. Kicking off in Chapter 6, you play as Sarah Noah, the heir to House Wolfert. Your goal is to assist and protect Prince Roland of Whiteholm in the war against the inciting as Frosty Duchy. But you don't just focus on the three primary kingdoms. There are periphery cutscenes that offer a look into what others are doing, which helps to draw a more accurate picture of the story direction. For as much as I enjoy the colorful, more lighthearted adventures of Tactics Advance and Grimoire of the Rift, it's refreshing to revisit a more mature tactics game. I'm really interested in seeing how the story continues down each divergent questline. If I could fix or change anything, I think I would redub much of the English dialogue. I'm not sure if it's the actors or the director, or if they simply ran out of time before the direct reveal, but the English delivery is really stiff. The demo is only in English, but checking out the Japanese voice acting, it seems much better by comparison, which I imagine will only be all the more true if you don't speak any Japanese. I will do no such thing. We won't be party to your treachery. Kotoru. Obviously, having both English and Japanese voice options would be nice too, but I'm sure that feature will actually be in the final game. There are also frame rate issues that I hope get ironed out before the final game releases. The demo runs fine for the most part, but when there's an abundance of particle effects, the frame rate noticeably dips. It's not huge, but it happened consistently across my six or so hours of playtime. Still, Project Triangle Strategy seems like the SRPG that I've always wanted. Thematically, it's akin to Tactics Ogre and Final Fantasy Tactics War of the Lions. It's violent and bloody with lots of politicking in its storylines. Gameplay-wise, Triangle Strategy has cherry-picked favored and beloved and otherwise interesting mechanics from across the genre. And there are branching story routes, which makes the dialogue trees that much more important. I cannot wait for Project Triangle Strategy, or whatever it will be called when it releases in 2022. In the meantime, if you're a fan of Tactics JRPGs, you need to play this debut demo.
What are your thoughts on the matter? Let me know in the comments below, and of course, subscribe, hit the bell, and check out the other videos on screen. Thanks.